One of the big questions for scientists, for inventors, and for society at large is what really is the connection between what goes on in science institutions like universities and government labs and what goes on in the marketplace in terms of applications that consumers and other businesses actually use. With that sort of open question about how important science is to invention, my colleague Mohammed Ahmedpour and I saw an opportunity to bring data to that. And so what we did is we took all U.S. patents in the last 30 years or so, about 5 million patents, and we looked at the prior art upon which they built. And we connected that set of about 5 million patents to a huge database of about 32 million scientific research articles to see if there is much connectivity. So when you build a big citation network between patents and papers, you find that really it's one big network. Really, it's very strongly connected. It's much more pervasively connected and much more quickly connected than I would have expected. So let's take Bernard Riemann, a very famous, skilled mathematician from the middle of the 19th century, who developed a theory of geometry and was sort of broadly ignored. Fast forward about 60 years later, a guy named Albert Einstein is developing a series of relativity. Einstein has to solve some equations and figure out a way to represent this idea and understand it. But what's the essential techniques that he eventually comes across and uses? Riemannian geometry. Well, you go forward another several decades, and suddenly we have the idea of launching satellites to create a global positioning system. Well, how do those things work? Those satellites on board them are extremely accurate clocks, and they would be completely wrong if you didn't adjust them for Einstein's ideas. You have to adjust them for the fact that the satellites are further from the center of our gravity and also moving very fast. All of these things we see today in mobile applications on our smartphones connect back to GPS, that connects to Einstein, and in some sense, all of this goes back to the abstract ideas of a 19th century uh, German mathematician.